After practicing making an embouchure with just the head joint, we're ready to add on the rest of the flute. Let's assemble our instrument like we learned in the first couple of lessons. First, the head joint, then the body. Careful not to squeeze the keys. Then the foot joint. When I'm just standing with the flute and not playing, I like to have a good grasp on this part of the flute uh, right above the body, right below the head joint. There's no keys, I get a really good grip and I can just stand with my instrument. But when I'm ready to play, however, there are a couple of key points that are good to remember. We hold the balance of our flute in a couple of places. The first, where I have this little black pad, is one place. It rests on this part of the fleshy part of the left index finger. It goes right here on this black pad. Now, not many flutes have it. It's available for purchase. It's kind of a little bit easier. Um, it helps show, especially beginners, uh, where to place the finger, but it's not necessary. But it is positioned in between the first two keys on the body of the flute. So that's where we want this fleshy part of our index finger to go. Right here, it rests right here. The second point of stability is our right thumb. Our right thumb goes right below. Do you see this? I have a little pad covering one of my keys. It's white. My thumb is going about right under this white key. So on the, on the body, it's the second key in. Exclude the foot joint. The body, it's the second key in. My thumb rests there. Third point of stability when we're playing with this note would be the, the right pinky. The right pinky's main home is on this first key on the foot joint. Rest right here. The fourth and final point of stability, which is very, very, very important, equally as important as all the others, is the contact with the lip plate and the actual lips. Using the fleshy part of the left hand, you want to press the lip plate slightly, not too hard, but you want to definitely have contact from the lip plate to the lips. You want zero space in between the distance between your chin and your lips. This is all covered by the lip plate. Posture, another reminder, please stand. I know it's all really overwhelming. There is a lot to think about with our hands, where they balance, but stand up straight, good posture, just like you're standing alone without the instrument, place the instrument up to your face. And remember our balance points. Number one, right here, left hand. Number two, right thumb. Number three, right pinky. And number four, your actual lips. Now we're ready to make a sound. We're going to do the same thing that we did with just the head joint alone. Forget about your fingers on the keys. Focus on the points of stability on the flute. Same concept applies. If you're not covering, if you're not pressing down any keys at all and your pinky is on this little key on the foot joint, you'll be playing a C sharp. This is the simplest note on the flute that requires the least amount of keys pressed. How do we play all the other notes? <laughs> well, there is a specific place for each of your fingers on each of these keys. It's kind of like a home base. So um, for instance, this first key on the body belongs to the right, the right ring finger and only the right ring finger. Your right middle finger will never be on this key nor will your right index finger. It will always be this ring finger. After that, your right middle finger belongs on the key directly to the left. Placing them down in order, your right index finger on the next key. And again, as covered before, your right pinky belongs on the very first key of the foot joint. And we have a stable thumb support. That covers the right hand. Left hand. 
This little gizmo key out here that seems to stick out of the body of the flute belongs to the pinky in the left hand. After that, your ring finger left hand goes on the next key over. Middle finger of the left hand, the next key over. And the most tricky part, because there's three keys left, but only one finger is this index finger. It goes right here. There are two, there's the first key, finger, third key. So there are two keys that are skipped. Um, depending on the flute, it, they might be more obvious um, than others, but on my flute, there's these spiky things that are on these two keys. Doesn't look too pleasant to put your fingers on, but this key is very smooth, so just by looking at it, you might be able to tell which finger goes on which key. Last but not least, our thumb in our left hand. We have two keys that are on the bottom of the flute. Right now, we will only be focusing on this bigger key. This key to the left will cover later, but not now, only this key. And that is where our thumb goes. Our thumb can be pressing this key or just resting, hanging out. Either way, we need to have our points of stability really, really strong so that we can balance the flute without relying on the thumb. It's very hard. There's a lot of stability points to remember and a lot of weight. But the more that you try, the easier that it gets. Once we have all of our fingers down on the keys, we know where all the keys are. In subsequent lessons, we will learn different notes. But for now, just try and keep track of which finger goes on which key. That would be perfect. Breathing. I know we've already been making a couple sounds on the flute, but for longer phrases, for more, definitely more advanced breathing, and for future practice, remember um, that the breath comes from your stomach. It comes from really low. It doesn't come from up high. An example of a really high shallow breath would sound and look something like this. Notice when I breathe in, it's a high pitch. My shoulders tend to raise. And when I raise my shoulders, I actually cut off a lot of air, that I, a lot of air that I would have otherwise been able to use to breathe out into the flute. A good example of a low, nice, deep, low breath would sound and look something like this. Filling up from the very bottom of your stomach up, try and get a low sound. If you place your hand in front of your mouth and breathe in the same way, there's a really low pitch sound. If we do it the other way, it's way different, much higher. So aim for the low sound. Your air will go a lot further this way. Once we have covered all of these bases, we have our fingers on the keys. In the next lesson, you will be learning some new notes.